There we go. Go live. Dusty, I think this is the first time I've seen you in not a hoodie. In not it's officially hoodie. warm in Ohio. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dusty Doobie in uh, some Florida clothing. I, I just went and jogged like four miles. It's uh, beautiful. It's it's real nice out. It's like seventy five. So I'm I'm living my nice. best life right now. Oh yeah, um oh yeah. So we just starting the thing. Um hi everyone, welcome to Let's Talk About Feelings on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. I am Robbie Rapol, as usual, uh, with the man Dusty Pitstick, our honorary co-host Amber. And now we got uh, Joshua Scott in the house, and um, I am tattooing uh, Thor from Freak Factory Tattoo Supplies today. So uh, um, when he gets back in here, he will be part of this. But uh, yeah, um, oh, there we go. And uh, yeah, so hello, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me good? Yes. Yes. All right, cool. It's hard sometimes in the tattoo room try and do this and figure things out. I still don't know if I like this. Actually, let me move it over here and see if I like it better over there. But um, I'm just going to jump right into it. We usually don't uh, have topics specifically, but since it's so loud right now in the tattoo community, me and Dusty decided we we're going to talk about the tattoo gate. Scandal, scam, whatever it is. Yes, um, fill me in because I've only seen a little bit of it. What's up? I need to be filled in on this. So, okay. Um, for those Tattoo of Gate know, is how you get into Tattoo City. <laughs> <laughs> that was my joke real, for the day. I just want to check real quick. Is my mic working? Because it's dangling right now. Yes, yes it's working. Yeah. All right, perfect. And everyone, this is Thor. Hello. What's up, Thor? He is uh, letting me murder his hand today, so that's funsies. Um, but yeah. Somebody so, is called Thor. Yes. You're pretty much funny. exactly what I picture when he's like, hey, a dude named Thor. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, a, a big dude with rad hair is about to show up. <laughs> I, I try hard. <laughs> I try hard. We're going for the full look. <laughs> So, um, Tattoo Gate is hilarious. Let's see. Yeah, well, I mean, it's <laughs> a weird thing. Um, so, this woman, uh, I got a week uh, last week. I was down south for a guest spot. Yo, can you let that person in? Um, no, I don't have a touch screen. My bad. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, it's okay right? <laughs> so, last week I was at a guest spot down south, uh, John Nelson's studio. And, um, Fucking the last day I was there, I start seeing some shit. Uh, this woman um, basically got me scammed out of four grand uh, before even receiving a tattoo. Oh my God. And I believe so, it was just under 2000, but there was options where she could have been scammed more. You're right. Yeah, no. So it was. No, it was a thousand dollar deposit, um, fifteen hundred dollars for the drawing, and then one hundred eighty for the console. consultation. So, um, so she, so this goes on, right? And I see this video, and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. And then it fucking blew up. The next few days, it just went nuts, and now I can't open my fucking my computer or my phone without seeing something about it. Um, and so. You know, upon further inspection, she took Russ Abbott's course, uh, and they have this collaborative tattoo pricing model, um, where with the right artist, I can see it working, um, and the right clientele. So you have a three-tiered system of pricing, right? So like fifteen hundred dollars is one sketch with a minor. Uh, a minor change, actually one completed drawing with a minor change. Um, the second one is, you know, multiple drawing or, you know, maybe more changes for 3,500. And the third option is $6,000 for multiple sketches, multiple changes. Uh, so this woman decided to go with the $1,500 option 
Um, long story short on that, she was given a bullshit fucking child sketch and then told that it was her fault um, that the communication was was poor on her end and basically you're an idiot, fuck you, pay me. Which I don't agree with at all. Um, and then some Stepping to say it was, was a that- bullshit child sketch, but even more than a bullshit child sketch, it was a bullshit child tracing. Oh, um, right. yeah. was another video that she literally just took this girl's reference art, traced it, doodled some flowers, didn't even follow what the girl asked for in her $180 console, and then was like, here's this 15-minute sketch. That'll be $1,500. <clears throat> 15 and, and minutes is really generous. If you've seen the sketch, 15 minutes is a very generous guess. <laughs> and so she was a she was real combative and real assy with with the client uh blamed everything on her the client gave uh efficient fucking sketches i mean uh, efficient reference material um and was uh, was just basically shit on and shamed about how it was her fault when really if you have eyes and you're and you're a human with any brain you realize this person is just like that version of myself when I used to argue with the clients and blame everything on them just so I could get a win because I was an angry little fuck. That's who this tattoo artist is. Um, her work isn't really great. Uh, so I, I kind of put it on the on the client because she's like, I love her work. Well, if you loved her work, then maybe you might be blind. Um, so that's <laughs> one of the best. Dog, come on. Come on, bro. Tell me that fucking shit. <laughs> Yo, Medusa. You ain't been fucking tattooing long and you blow motherfuckers out of the water that have been tattooing 10, 20 years because your shit's clean as fuck, all right? This girl, Lindsay's work is fucking trash. Like, her compositions fucking suck. Her, her like, her saturation sucks. Her discernibility is just not there. So I, I do give the client fault on that. But she also said, like, it's my fault, you know, like, the client said a lot, it's my fault, it's my fault, it's my fault. You know, like, I don't take responsibility for this part, but this part is my fault. So I have respect for the client. Um, and it's gone It's gone far as fuck. Russ Abbott made an eight-part video apologizing and explaining. Um, Russ's fucking teaching style is very bland to me, but he's very informational. So, like, his, his apology was very bland. It seemed very rehearsed. Um, it didn't seem super genuine, but it's, he said all the right words, and I ain't mad at him about it. He even said he's gonna, he would love to refund her the money that this artist fucking paid, um, that this client paid the artist. So, like, good on Russ. That was dope. Um, you know, and, and then there, there's screenshots where Russ was congratulating this person for making an extra $17,000 in a month with this collaborative tattoo method. Um, so I feel like I feel like this is opening a lot of eyes to the coaching world of tattooing. Um, even my eyes as a tattoo artist, coach, um, life coach, human coach. Uh, not everybody's got the fucking sauce, and you can't just tell everybody you got the fucking sauce. Um, so this is one of those things where I feel like it could be really good for the tattoo community. I feel like my twenty five hundred dollar day rate, where I didn't even fucking think of a collaborative fucking. Uh, concept idea. I already do that with my clients. You come in that day, I fucking figure out a few ideas with you. We Google some stuff, and then I fucking create something right there, and that's a part of your fucking $2,500 day rate, right? Like, I didn't even realize that, like, I could be leaving money on the table based on a business a model or concept. Um, and I'm not trying to be cocky, but I probably could fucking charge people more money to do these collaborative things um, but I don't feel like that's in who I am as an artist, right? So I don't feel like that model is set right for me. I just raise my rates as I see fit with the way that things are going on in my tattoo career. Um, so I would love to hear some other people weigh in on this now that we have just the basic concept of what tattoo gate is here. Great to say. Go ahead, Medusa. You raise your hand. You party. I I just wanted to say. Um, as you know, none of us are in Russ's brain. 
Um, but I do think that when he congratulated her on making an extra seventeen hundred dollars a month, I don't think he thousand. knew Ooh, that thousand. 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 Yeah. Yeah. What I say seventeen hundred. Um, I just to seventeen thousand. Like, I don't think he knew that she was actually doing thirty second children's tracing doodles. I think he probably thought she was actually pulling pulling through and delivering what was supposed to be delivered. That was my understanding of it. Too. Yeah, because I, I I don't assume that he would openly congratulate someone for being a total fucking scamming bitch. Uh, he probably here's, definitely here's point, thought though. that she was delivering. Here's the thing, though, and this has been eating me inside. Uh, <laughs> I want to eat how... it. How? <laughs> <laughs> in a spoon. How are you going to call yourself somebody's mentor if you don't even know what Is the fuck they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know well, I mean, like, I've I've had a lot of people teach me things, and then I went off and was all like, yeah, they taught me how to do this, and I did something completely different before. We're all fucking idiots. We're all there, but if, if, he, if he is congratulating her online, get your fucking 17 grand, fucking, and he's making these videos with, like, literally, like, cartoon dollar signs and cash register noises. But he doesn't know. It's the same thing as another coaching program that I think we all know about, where the guy running the coaching program was telling all of these people, I only reach out to the select few. I only reach out to the heavy hitters, to the best and the brightest. And then he does this coaching program where he just basically tells everyone, raise your rates, raise your rates, raise your rates. Give them a granola bar and be kind, but raise your rates, raise your rates, raise your rates. And then I see these people's work and like some of it, blows me the fuck away some of it is very rough and he's telling them you can charge this you can charge this you can charge this when he has never looked at their work and if you're going to be a mentor and you are going to deem yourself somebody high enough to place value on other people's work and on other people's pocketbooks but you are somebody that doesn't even know what the fuck their style is or what they're doing or where their studio is at or anything about them like you don't need to be mentoring people <laughs> Well, and, you know, like, as, like I said, as a coach, personally, I realize, like, I need to fucking check my P's and Q's even more so than I already do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to make sure that, like, I can't just make blanket statements to a whole fucking room of people that aren't on the same level, you know? And uh, so another, another positive from this for me is, like, paying attention more than even I would have before. You did your coaching thing and I was there, like every person in it that you talked to, you would make these statements while they were talking, oh, I'm having trouble with this and this because this is in my life and this is this. And you would say some stuff like, well, remember when we were on the phone for like an hour and a half last week and we talked about this and that and that because you were reaching out to people, you were getting to know their issues, you were getting to know them as people, you were like, I want to limit this thing to 12 people because I don't want to have a zoom class of 50 squares of faces that I don't even know who half these people are. And it just turns into this thing. And that's like, there's a way to do it. And I think a lot of these guys are doing it in such a way that it's like, Hey, everybody, give me your money. You get to watch me talk on video. I'm going to throw out this stuff. I'm going to celebrate everybody's wins, even though I don't know who the fuck you are. And then, you know, Raise your rates, raise your rates, raise your rates. And uh, it's creating a whole class of people that are coming up now that I know your day rate. I know Josh's day rate. I know that both of them are significantly higher than my day rate. I also know how long you guys have been tattooing, how much work you've put into it, the goods like – it's a give and take. And I think that art is worth what people are willing to pay. And the fact that the girl in Canada's work wasn't even that great. And this woman was still like, dude, if I would have been treated with equity and if I would have been treated as a good human and explained things, I would have given her four grand, five grand to do my tattoo. Turns into a whole thing that like, it's not about the rate. I mean, I, there are some people out there whose work is trash that are trying to you know jack up the prices just because someone told them to. But it's not even about the rate that you're charging. It's about the experience you give. 
And we had such a funny like version of that Saturday at the shop that Josh was tattooing this dude for hours. I was tattooing this other dude for hours. They're both returned clients. I know what he charged to do his. I know what I charged to do mine. And they were talking with each other. And my client's wife was there and she was talking too. And I had ordered pizza and we're all just chilling and eating pizza. And they were talking to each other about, because we had been kind of talking about the tattoo gate stuff and all of this and explaining it to them. They're like, when I'm here, it doesn't matter that he's charging this and he's charging this. We all feel welcome. You listen to what we want. You consult with us. You give us the tattoo we want. We felt heard. We get good work. We didn't even ask for food and you guys ordered pizza to feed us. Like, It's a lot more about just treating people with respect and working hard to keep becoming a better artist and to give, as long as you're doing it right, it doesn't matter what you charge necessarily. And that was the big thing about it that like still has my knickers in a twist. That's right. I said it. Knickers in a twist. <laughs> um, is, is that what did you call this me? lady? This lady had the audacity to charge like $2,500 before the tattoo was even there, present this girl with like a shitty rushed tracing. And then when the girl was like, Hey, this feels weird or not right was even willing to like still pay more money and get tattooed if the girl did right by her that she immediately turned it into your your communication was poor you're the problem you're this and it's the same thing that you and i have talked about with artists that we know that if you show up and you don't have flawless porcelain skin they're like your skin is trash i don't want to tattoo you or people that are like oh you don't you don't have 2500 right now I'm not even talking to you. Like, it's just such a, like, God, we get to wear whatever we want, put on good music, do art, have a good life. And people pay us really well for it mm -hmm. to have that attitude of like, I'm just not going to be nice or I'm going to talk down to you, or I'm not going to make you feel seen and heard is so mind blowing. And they're getting it from these programs that are teaching people. It's never, hey, here's how to provide a good experience. Here's how treat people the way you would want to be treated. Do all these things. It's always jack up those rates, charge for drawings, charge for this. Here's how you can squeeze even more pennies out of these people. And there's no emphasis on like being a better artist, going to conventions, traveling, taking seminars, trying new styles. It's just charge, charge, charge. Whatever the tattoo is, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Charge, 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 charge. Right, right. And you know, it just, it just kills me that like, if you're going to have the audacity to stand by your program and stand by this girl and celebrate that if someone says they're making 17 grand doing sketches in a month, and that's not a red flag to you and you don't know them well enough to know their work, but you're calling them your, you know, student and you're a mentor, like you don't really know. And you don't really care. You're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep giving me money to tell you things. Yeah. And it's such a, it's crap. So play can someone? Game. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. Um, can someone correct me? I haven't kept up with like a lot of it. Just like kind of what me and Dusty have talked about. Does this person? Uh, doesn't she have a bunch of complaints by either like the Better Business Bureau or like fraud or something like that? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like I said, that's just a a, a comment kind of thing that I read. Um, she's um she's she's getting google reviews removed like people were seeing that like her studio has had a one star review or one star rating and then now it's back up to 4.8 stars um right so that is a google thing that if a bunch of people out of nowhere just bomb you with bad reviews that they consider it like spam and they get rid of them but she had bad reviews and better business bureau complaints from before that that kind of got swept swept under the rug when Google deleted all the bad reviews. There um, are still better uh, Business Bureau reviews open to the public that I read last night where the business responded publicly and it is not professional. The oh, yeah. public comments are as you know, it's like watching a 14 year old girl in high school fight over a boyfriend that she only dated for like two weeks. So oh, yeah. we're it's dealing with people so that bad. are business savvy. They don't know how to treat humans and they just feel like they're owed something. Um, which, like I said, I can't hate too hard because I've been that guy in the past. Uh, and now I believe, uh, you know, I've, I've paid my dues. I've paid my toll. And I know I don't want to hurt people. Um, I mean, obviously we hurt people. 
Uh, you know, this is yeah. super living. So I don't want to hurt you anymore. I already hurt your pocketbook by fucking taking your money. I already hurt your body. Um, but I want you to have a transformative experience when you sit in my fucking chair. You know, like, I want you to work out the problems of your day, your week, your month, your year, your fucking trauma from the past. Whatever the fuck it is that you're going through, I want to help you work through that shit. Love you, baby. Um, and like, I don't want to, I don't want to make it worse for you because I'm a cocky asshole that doesn't know how to fucking take criticisms or run a business with love and respect. Um, so, you know, I'm a different breed because I decided in 2012 that I was the product and I was going to use love as my number one ingredient. And I can't go back on that because that makes me a liar. Um, and I don't like being a liar. And I feel better when I live better. But these motherfuckers ain't living better. And uh, hopefully they learn from this and grow from this. Uh, but yeah, let's let's hear other people weigh in on this because I'm interested. I just don't understand how you can sleep at night after someone has given you a lot of money and put so much trust in you and they're hoping to get a life-changing experience with you that they're going to physically be carrying for the rest of their life. And you could just suddenly say, it's your fault. No refunds. Bye, bitch. Right. Like, I don't understand that's, that. how do you do that to another human being? How do you sleep at night? How do you have a sense of where's the morale? The audacity. <laughs> for real and it's a lot of people don't because and again it, it's not to harp on the coaching stuff but like there are good coaches out there there are good mentors out there um there's a girl that actually came into our shop recently and i helped review her portfolio and josh talked with her a little bit another guy will at our shop chatted with her a little bit and i ended up pointing her um to the guy that initially taught me back in like fucking 2003 he still owns a shop he tattooed my whole back recently and i was like hey man this girl's looking she's going to every shop she's bringing her portfolio she can draw her ass off she's doing things the right way i know you're a good teacher and you're a good dude would you want to chat with her he ended up chatting with her they had a big meeting he's actually pulling her into his new shop to apprentice he's going to be a killer teacher there are people out there that are awesome for every one of him there's a shop out there that's a puppy mill with like 10 apprentices at once that's just two months, get a machine in their hand, get them out there. And there's these coaches that do it. And it turns it into, they go on Instagram, they go on TikTok, they go on these places. And it's, it's almost like, remember back in the nineties and the early two thousands where there was the infomercial with like the two twins that were always standing by like some like fly ass Lamborghini outside a mansion. And they were like the real estate gurus. And they're like, let us teach you how to sell houses. You be chilling in the hot tub too. And it was like, they're the new version of that. Like the 2020, those guys are these coaches that are like dog apprentice for two months, pick up a machine, start charging 2K a day. You can do whatever the fuck you want because you're a private artist with a private studio. And they just produce these like 20 something year old kids that are like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm six months into the game. I know the day rates are 2K and they just like do some subpar art. They make no effort to learn to get better, to saturate, to line, to try new styles, to try new machines. They just, I got my trick and I can make two grand a day doing it. And Russ Abbott says I can be out in the fucking Caribbean making a million a year and riding on a boat. So like, fuck it, let's go. And it creates people that have no real understanding of like what a tattoo experience should be, that that shit should last for forever that you should be a good human. You should help guide them through the whole process. I did a guy's first tattoo today. Josh did a girl's first tattoo the other day while I was doing another girl's first tattoo. And I swear to God, they took twice as long as they should have because we were just like, hey, are you sure you like it? Is it in the right spot? Do you want me to tweak this? It's on you for forever. Please speak up if it's not perfect. And we really tried to help guide them through those processes because it's like, dude, it is on you for forever. And the least I can do is make sure you are thrilled with it. Even if it's, you know, your little $250 hour long Pinterest banger or whatever, and that you just fucking love it. And that's the experience you're supposed to give. But like these younger people that are going through these coaching programs instead of traditional apprenticeships never really learn that. And so it turns into them being like, just so fucking blase. Oh, my mentor told me you're the problem. Your skin sucks. You healed it rough. You did this. You did this. Uh, no refunds. 
I right. think no refresh. One of the things uh, that I'm struggling with, and I'm wondering if I'm feeling selfish uh, for feeling this way, but like. Last year, I blew out a few lines on an elderly woman. I'm not very experienced with older skin. Uh, it's a lot thinner than younger skin. And I blew out a couple of lines. I went home. I didn't even go home first. I fucking, as soon as she walked out of the door, pulled my boss into the back of the shop and started sobbing, saying that I wasn't a good artist. I needed to quit. I'm sorry. And like, what the fuck do I do? I just blew out a couple of lines and I'm just ready to fucking jump off a bridge i, I love, hated I love, myself I that. as you were saying that like i started getting a chuckle because i saw how small the problem was and you're like i need to jump off a bridge and it's like it's totally natural to go there but like don't go too far into being a good person that yeah you, you but no like this shit yourself. bothers me like it hurts oh, yeah. when i do wrong by my clients and yeah. i'm feeling and like, I, you know, I make a decent living, but still when it's time to pay rent, I'm still kind of, you know, scraping by. And yet there are these people that are fucking on yachts charging $1,700 for shitty sketches. And they're all like, I'm a tattoo artist, no refunds. And I'm just, I, it's not fucking fair. Having uh, moral it, sucks. <laughs> yeah. That's cool about it. It's not, I feel like is so that scary. you don't have to live in fear of the internet finding out and absolutely fucking canceling you for being a shitty person, at least. That's true. I was going to touch on that. That's too, not going to be my rest. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, but no, the, <laughs> the way you come at it and you, you know, you feel bad for, you know, fucking up an old lady's arm or whatever. That's great. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking integrity. That's the morality that you're talking about and stuff like that you do you would deserve to you know up your rate something like that you know what i'm saying based off of just that feeling alone you know what i mean um i fucked up tattoos before didn't sleep for fucking days after it you know what i mean because i actually give a fuck i care what i'm putting on people and i i understand i ain't the fucking greatest artist in the world but i give these people like a great experience coming to me I have repeat clientele. Fuck, dude, I don't even have 2,000 followers on Instagram. And I stay busy. I stay booked. I keep my head down. I fucking treat people right. I do solid tattoos. And people keep coming back. Every time, though, that I've upped my rate, it's in my head. Like, all right, fuck. Uh, now I really got to show up. Yeah. And, I think, and I think that's where people in, like, today's society is like no you owe me that and it's like motherfucker i put almost 10 fucking years in fucking the first half of that was fucking people up bro you know because i didn't have certain mentors and stuff like that around me at the time i didn't have shows and you know stuff like that so fucking people up so it's good like the coaching things are good man but if that integrity and that morality stuff is like out the fucking window uh, bro it's like i hope that i still have another 10 15 years of tattooing and i just hope that i can continue to build and grow and grow with these people and make these connections and if i keep treating people like shit like i'm not i wouldn't be in the house that i'm in now you know because i ran into a client that was a real estate agent and we hit it off i have the longest fucking consultation process on the face of fucking tattooing i think um, her and I's consultation went two and a half hours. Um, I ended up booking, I think it was like a $4,000 session out of her. She's been back before, but that relationship I built allowed, allowed me to text her one day and be like, Hey, I'm looking for a place and boom, boom, boom. Now, if I would have been like, Hey, you know, fuck your idea. Give me a thousand bucks. That's my deposit. You owe me 5K. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want on you. I, I don't know that I would have fucking booked that person. Absolutely. You know what I mean? 
And then, and then that segues into, I don't know that I'm living in this fucking house right now. I'm currently looking for a new house. He recently, recently reached out to me and put me in contact with mortgage people and all kinds of shit. Put me on this list for whenever like new houses pop up again. If I, she would have paid anything I told her to pay because I sat here and I fucking valued everything she was telling me. I did. Ex there was multiple changes that needed done the day of her appointment. It was frustrating as fuck. I wanted to pull my fucking hair out, but I took that shit off into the fucking break room, pulled my fucking hair out and then went back out and be like, all right, we're good to go. Let's go. You know what I mean? It's just uh, like, it's not like we ain't going to get frustrated and pissed off at clients, man. Me and you had that conversation, Ravi, about, I, I don't know how people shit on these clients and stuff, uh, you know, publicly and still stay booked. It blows my mind. But we talked about that, that behind the scenes, it's not probably what we think it is you know what i mean so you meet these people me i'm especially one of those people i look like a fucking dickhead bro you know like i look like i want to set everybody on fucking fire i know this and it's a very fucking hard thing to overcome but then when people get to talking to me and stuff like that it's like oh oh okay cool yeah <laughs> so i mean just it's gonna set me on fire <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, totally, man. And like, so, uh, fucking, oh, uh, when I went down to John Nelson's shop, I talked to him about that. I'm like, man, you know, you get a lot of shit, don't you? Cause like, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're deadpan and you're like, you, you talk shit about people in, in your videos. And honestly, he's one of the nicest fucking dudes I've ever met. Right. He was right, super right, nice, yeah. super sweet and super loving. And he gives a fuck about his clients and he cares. And I was like, oh, wow. So this is 100% just satire. And on top of that, he pays for it. You know, he pays for it by getting crucified by the people. Um, but, you know, he's got the personality type where he can handle it. You yeah, know, yeah. Me, I'm not that. You know, like, I care too much about <laughs> thing as much as I don't want to. Like, I want to fucking know that you don't have to love me, but at least don't hate me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that's that's part of my game is where I just make sure I make people not hate me and I love them in return. And like the truth of the matter is I love all my clients. I love all my fucking artists. You know, I love everybody that fucking comes into my studio to work or to get tattooed because I fucking operate on love as an operating system and it makes me feel better about my life and, and how I am. So like to me, going back to that old way of being a dick to clients needing to be right. That doesn't fucking work for me anymore. You know, right. like you go in the back and you pull your hair out and you deal with it. And then you come out with a fucking smile on because sometimes <laughs> it actually is right. You know, sometimes right. the idea is like really cool. And your pushback is fear, not actual, you know what the fuck you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know? I yeah. just want to say that sometimes the nightmare clients are actually really fucking dope once you shed your ego and try to get behind where their brain is yeah absolutely yeah for sure yeah because they're just motherfuckers with passion that want to see something dope on their body and we're just like not understanding it like and that's why years ago i stopped talking to my clients and started drawing with my clients because i'd end up in an argument and it'd be like i don't fucking see how this is gonna work and then, you know, like, then I just pick up a fucking marker and run on their skin with it and be like, like this? And they're like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, oh, we're saying the same thing. We're just saying it differently. Fuck. You know, like, finding, yeah, yeah. finding effective communication with the people in your life is a very major thing that I don't think a lot of people acknowledge is such a powerful tool and such a necessary I I, think, I can think of a couple clients over the years that I've been full blown transparent with about that, that I've been like, Hey, this is getting frustrating because I think we're both trying to say the same thing different ways. And I don't want you to think I'm mad at you. I'm frustrated because I want your tattoo to be perfect. This is on you for forever. A lot of times it's people who it's their first tattoo. And so like they're being extra nitpicky because they're nervous I'm nervous because I'm like, dude, this person's stressing me the fuck out and I don't think I'm getting what they're saying and I don't want to keep 
drawing the wrong thing. So I'm like drawing it in front of them to try and make it work. And like Medusa said, it just turns into, I'll flat out be like, Hey, I promise I'm not mad at you. This is the stress of the situation. It is on you for forever. I want it to be perfect. And then after like an hour and a half of bickering and finally getting the right design, we sit down to tattoo it. And like she said, it's, they turned out to be super fucking cool people. And you're like, you go into your day, like I'm going to hate this fucking Karen ass bitch with her fucking 18 birth flowers that she wants the size of a playing card. And then they end up leaving. And like Josh said, they're like, turns out they're a fucking realtor or a dentist or like, you know, they own some cool business. And then you're like super fucking cool with them. And he, Josh has a repeat client that I think the first time they were in there, everybody at the shop was like, holy shit, these people are fucking loud and they are a lot. Oh. <laughs> and by the second time they came in, they're like, they own a business that does automotive shit. They're offering to people at the shop, like, oh, just come get your oil changed here. We'll just do it. They're like bringing people's shoes and shit. Like, we got you these cool ass gifts. And they followed into the new what? shop and like, they're, they're dope ass people. But the first time they were in there, they're like straight out of Margaritaville and they were very loud and we're all like, oh no. And by the time they left, we're like, fucking love you. Here's my cell. You're my new best friend. Let's do karate in the garage. <laughs> I have a very recent experience that also I think circles back to the tattoo gate thing. Um, I uh, actually just yesterday met up with a client for what was we had our consultation about a month ago. She gave me a 15 page Google document with all of her ideas, drawings, reference photos, all of that. Uh, right off the bat, that sounds like so much. Um, sounds although, overwhelming. It, it's I love pretty that, overwhelming. That, to be like, I loved how organized <laughs> and everything it was. Um, there was like, you know, it it came off as in like, I want 40 different things within this big of an area type of thing. But we worked together. We had a consultation for a little over an hour. We maintained communication over the next month. Um, and I had her scheduled for all day yesterday. Uh, and when she came in, I had spent hours because we're ending up doing a whole sleeve hours I stayed up to like 4 a.m one night just drawing just drawing and trying to make this sleeve perfect we came in and uh you know uh we had a little bit we had we talked for like two hours about the design I printed it out I sized it up so that she could see how big it would actually be because it kind of looks different when you're holding it up to your arm versus looking at a small ipad screen and uh we talked a lot about potential changes revisions blah 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 the entire time I'm like this is on you forever I want you to be stoked on this design if there's any part of it that's all like eh, no let's talk about it um and you know it ended up we have to reschedule because there's a lot more drawing I need to do and it's a lot more than just having her sit in the lobby for like four more hours while I'm drawing and resizing and printing everything out fuck it we rescheduled um and it was honorable was up, on your part Super yeah on your uh, part yeah and well the thing is you know I didn't charge for any of that sure it's a day lost I could have been making money with a different client I had her scheduled for the whole day because I thought maybe we'd be starting the sleeve um so I ended up you know just going home early that day and not making any money and then after that is when I logged onto Instagram and there was all the shit about tattoo gate and I'm sitting there being all like I did literally like over possibly over eight hours of drawing at least uh, over a month and constant communication, revisions and stuff, I'm going to be doing more. And I only charged a $100 deposit that is only going towards her tattoo. None of that, none of that design time I got paid for. And I had never, it had never occurred to me that that was something people were doing. Now I don't know, like, should I start charging for design time? Or is that unethical 
because now, of this whole tattoo gate thing. It is thing. not unethical at all. <laughs> hey, Josh, you raised your hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got because like I've ran into that problem too, even with people that give me multiple page documents of what they want and stuff, you know. Um, so I have what is like kind of a client contract. Um, it's not like legally binding by any means, but it's everything I go over. I have them sign off on it. But the one thing is, so I do charge a thousand dollar deposit for like a full sleeve because my day rate's 2k. Now you do get, I'm usually in there by 10 o'clock in the morning and, uh, my clients get there at like 11. I go over, you know, everything with them. The, as soon as they get there. This will touch a little bit on why I charge 2K, you know, is I like I'll have their favorite coffee waiting for them when they get there or drink or whatever the case may be. We'll sit down. We'll talk about their design. I'm already set up and ready to go. You know, if I get in there super early. So I do. I tell them in the initial consultation that this, you know, Hey, we get in at 11. We talk about the design for a half hour to an hour. We can make minor changes. Absolutely. No problem. If you do not like the idea, this is going on you forever. Please tell me you're not going to offend me. You're not going to hurt my feelings or anything like that. So, um, and again, I spend so much time with them in a consult that usually when they come in, it's just like, no, I love it. Let's go. You know what I mean? I don't have to worry about a lot of that stuff. So I really try to tap into uh, the purpose and, and why they're doing it. Now, if it's just like a little small banger or funny, some funny jam or something, it's whatever, you know, we'll do it. But um, when it's like you get there, you don't like the design in my consultation, I will reschedule you one time for free. Like I don't charge you for that. Like, yes, I'm going to lose a day's pay. That sucks. But I'll reschedule you one time because again, this is going on you forever. So after I've gotten all your information and I I will tell you, since I've implemented that, I've never had to reschedule just to let you know. Like I always spend, I spend that much fucking time with them, you know, because I do value that, hey man, if we sit down for two or three days, you're probably giving me anywhere between four and $6,000. The least I can do is fucking hear you out and, and, and do my best to do everything you asked to do without shoving 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. I can't make that look pretty no matter how you, you know, try to put it in there. Now, if you don't like it on the second time and you just want to scrap it and I've got five, six hours in your design, I've got two hours in outlining it, making the stencil, whatever, I'm charging you for that. You know, I feel like I've been fair. I've sat with you a long time. I heard you during our, 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 our appointment and you did not like it. So I've now I've got a reconstructed idea of what you want. And now if you don't like that, what did you come to me for? You know, at, at this point, why are we working together? Right. You know, so it's one of those things where to help you, medusa instead of taking a hundred dollar deposit if you know you're going to charge this person a thousand dollars and i'll just use that as an arbitrary number if you know you're going to charge her a thousand dollars just get half up front (laughs) but when you get half up front be fully transparent on your process what you do what lane you're not going to shift into that kind of stuff. And then we, I always tell them at the very end, balls in your court, you know, what do you want to do? This is everything that I offer. This is what I do. If they don't like me or don't like my style, I will be the first person to like reference you to someone else, you know? Um, But if I've already spent X amount of time getting your design ready. I've taken three hours away from my family. I missed dinner because I've been drawing. Like, I'm not doing that fit for free, you know. Now, I kind of like low key will bend that rule when I'm doing the smaller stuff. You know what I'm saying? 
But if it's like the bigger scale stuff, like a full sleeve and you spent hours and hours and hours drawing it, and then you hop on the internet and see something like Tattoo Gate and like people on fucking yachts. It is very fucking discouraging. So I feel like the the formula that I have, no matter what your price point is, just get half up front. That's your drawing fee. The other half is me tattooing you. You know, that's how I break it down in my mind. Now, okay, this person's not going to come back for another week. Sucks I missed a day's pay. They're still on the books, though. I'm going to get paid next week. Cool, because next week, if they don't show up or they change something again, I am getting paid either way. You know what I'm saying? So that hundred dollars, yes, a hundred dollars. Like you know, I found in my my time doing this, I did fifty dollar deposits. I did a hundred. I did five hundred. Dude, people will flake on all this stuff. But when you really break it down, like, hey man, I've been thinking about this full sleeve for seven years now. How serious are you? Number one. Number two. If you're ready to put down half of anything that I tell you, then I think we're good. I think we've cut through all the red tape and the questions. Now, I take consultations strictly on Wednesdays. You know what I mean? So I can spend an hour, two hours with whoever. And I don't stack them on top of each other either. You know, I give I give time to do that. So just to help a little bit, because I know that is frustrating to like, fuck, I didn't get paid for this, you know? That's just a way to do it, in my opinion. If I do an if I do an hourly rate, I will take the first hour as a deposit. Because if it's like an hourly thing, chances are whatever I'm tattooing, I'm going to knock out in a couple hours, anyways. That's probably going to take me less than an hour to design, and I'm happy with that. You know, um, I know there's other people out here that I will not do this like little Pinteresty stuff, and like Dusty was saying, I. Uh, me when we did those first tattoos the other day i did a mom and the daughters and i didn't charge nearly my like rate and i spent way more time with them with them for like half the day yeah like way more than them and i wasn't i wasn't frustrated about it it was both of their first tattoos they they never like really committed to being in a tattoo shop. I wanted them to, you know, be comfortable. So, I mean, fuck, I just took it on the chin financially that day, you know, but it is what it is. That that word of mouth after that though, I'll, I'll be happy to hear feedback on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, they you know they spent an hour and a half with me, made sure everything was right, and I even told them where the location that they got it like does not heal well. Um, so since been doing this so long, and I understand what happens after. And then how people get sometimes and they think we're fucking robots and we don't make mistakes. And so I've learned to address that up front as well. You know, like, hey, this is going to probably heal out a little rough in this area. Now, on bigger sessions, like if I do a full sleeve, I offer a five hundred dollar follow up where I'll go through the entire tattoo again. For smaller stuff, I just charge a $50 setup fee. That's it. So I think there's a balance to be had, you know, between I, I broke it all down and, hey, what is my day worth to me and how much value can I give people out of that? Um, so always stay in your power and your like don't get in your head like i know the thing with the old lady and blowing out the lines and you want to like <laughs> and no, actually, I, get like, it. I get it i get it right after i explained that story i was reliving the feelings <laughs> yeah, like yeah, i'm yeah, a yeah. terrible person so I, I, and i just wanted to bring that up to say this i recently um and I'd say in the last year and a half, I fucked up a tattoo. We fucking spelled it wrong. Like I fucking didn't sleep. We all checked it. Everybody fucking looked at it. Five people fucking didn't notice it. It and was it was dude, a week. 
Yeah. A week yeah. before like anybody his, noticed? His, his mom noticed it. Yeah, his mom noticed it. Oh, so, like, man. you know, but, okay, and here's another thing, just to touch on a little bit of the tattoo gate stuff, where people would turn right back around and be like, well, my, my follow-up's 500 bucks, buddy. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. No, like, okay. I ask multiple people the spelling and everything. So we're all fucking idiots. So I'm just going to leave that one on the table. But at the end of the day, I still did the tattoo. I felt an obligation to fix this for this motherfucker. And I did. And I did not go. You owe me another fucking 1500 bucks, dude. Like, no, dude, I felt so guilty. I moved shit around to get him in as soon as I could fucking fix it. One, I don't want that fucking shit walking around out there. You know I'd what I'm be saying? be calling them every day. Is it healed yet? Can I work on it yet? Are you free? <laughs> come in, come in. <laughs> well, I see I see him pretty regularly liking my stuff on social media. So he, he must not be too mad at me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a really but, similar and, and, one. Oh, go, oh, ahead, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, I had one where a uh, husband and wife came in and they got uh, their anniversary dates in Roman numerals. And it was a like, here's the sketch. Love it. Okay, now it's a stencil. Love it. Now it's on your arm. Do you like it? Love it. Now it's done. Do you like it? Love it. This dude, it was a week later, his wife texted me and she's like, hey, his says two, not three. It was March, not February. And I'm like... In my head, I'm like, I don't know your fucking wedding date. You approved it, like, from sketch to stencil to on your body to you left happy. I still, same deal. I was like, the second that thing's healed, we're setting the date right now. We'll figure out a way to fix it. If we can't fix it, we'll cover it. You know, you don't owe me any money. Like, we're going to make this right because it was his first tattoo, and I want his experience to be the best experience possible. And even a funny story down the line of, like, oh, yeah, we all thought it was the wrong. And she even told me when she texted me, like, we are not mad at you. We approved this. We didn't even notice for a fucking week. This is on us. And I still was like, no, it's on me. We're going to make it right. And we went through it. And I remember when Josh had that with that. And it was it was the word Isaiah. And it's spelled like a million different ways. And this happened to be like a biblical spelling that was different. Wow. That That dude was like in it. He was lost in it over it. And they like, they fixed it and they made it right. But it was like, it's the same thing. And I was just going to sneak in there real quick because you guys are talking about deposits and all that. The girl in Canada that's like the center of all this, I do think that she did that sketch for in 15 minutes, that tracing, and she charged 1500 stupid. I have seen a lot of people, oh, well, there should be design fees and blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't necessarily think that there should be design fees within reason because if you're charging someone $2,500 for a full day of tattooing, you designing it should just be kind of part of that. And it is what it is at the same time. I have absolutely, I can think of at least a dozen people in my life that were like, I want to do this whole sleeve. We do a consultation and they're basically like, well, I don't know if I'm going to like it. Can you draw it? And I'm like, yeah, for $150 an hour. Cause that's my rate. You're going to end up paying about $500 for me to design this tattoo. If you like it, we'll apply that towards the tattoo. If you don't like it, then like you pay me $500 to basically spend a whole evening designing a full sleeve for you instead of fucking eating pizza and watching WrestleMania like I should be. And so like it, it, I have implemented that with people. If people are being wishy-washy or they're being like, I don't really know, I don't want to come in, then like, yeah, I'm not designing a tattoo for you for free. And doing mostly traditional stuff, I'm kind of in the wheelhouse, like the lucky situation of more often than not, even if you want a bigger piece, you're probably coming to me with like, hey, I want a big fucking rad eagle and an anchor and a banner and a sailor lady, like shit that you know what it's going to look like and you kind of already have the vibe. And I know it is harder for people like Josh that are basically like, oh, I'm going to turn your whole life story into a black and gray realism thing on your arm. Cause like you really have to design that, but it is like, yeah, if someone's being a flake, I totally get the idea of like charging that, but whatever your hourly is and what you're going to pour into designing that for somebody, I guarantee you it's not $1,500 for a fucking Fox doodle with some little circle flowers around it. And if that girl had come at her with like a fully flesh design that clearly took her her whole weekend to design, 
And then the girl was like, oh, I fucking hate it. You know, like there would be a completely different conversation, but she was definitely charging people to doodle and then not applying any of that money towards the session. And that's where like this girl's like, hey, my tattoo deposit, my drawing and my consultation, I'm over $2,500 in the hole. And you haven't even like set up your machine yet. Like that's where it's like, design fees aren't necessarily a bad idea and maybe rolling that price into the tattoo once everything's good. But yeah, like $1,500 for a fucking blurb. I traced the Fox and circled some flowers around it is just insanity. I believe one of the other commenters had uh, one of the other people that came out with having been ripped off by this artist uh, had mentioned that the artist called the cops on them when they didn't want to pay such extreme i saw i saw that one and we haven't talked about that that's extreme well uh and she shared her id around to other tattooers with all of her personal information on it yeah after this girl this girl had paid over three thousand dollars and gotten tattooed for maybe like five hours and not even gotten like she asked to like cover up some lettering right here and the girl was like oh i don't do cover-ups she told her that after she had designed it and taken all of her money like oh by the way i'm not doing that so we're only doing your shoulder she had tattooed her for maybe like five hours and just done like some illustrative floral and the girl was like at the end of it all she's like well i've already given you three grand and you said my deposit comes off through the last session so like i feel like we're square and this girl shared her id with her personal information on her Instagram and her stories and to everyone and was like, this lady's a scammer and then called the fucking cops on me. And then she was legally bound to have to pay for it. That client- She charged her a day rate. She charged her a day rate, tattooed her for two hours and then said, oh, hey, I got to pick up my kid and just dipped and still was like, you owe me my full day rate though. To get the police involved? (laughs) Mm. well that's uh that's why um i I do that um sort of client contract deal because in the state of ohio it used to be um handshake deals were you know good but it's not like that anymore so there was an artist at our old shop that had to go you know through some court proceedings over uh, over a thousand dollar deposit and stuff like that. I don't know what the outcome of that ever came to be, but I did learn. Um, that's where I did learn that, like, even though, like, I don't go and have these contracts notarized or anything like that, it's still, hey, that is your signature. You did agree to this. You know, another thing too is when I build the relationship with my clients. I don't, I'm kind of like Robbie, even though I look like I want to set people on fire, I come out everything with love at first, you know what I mean? So every client that interacts with me, I do not truly feel that they're going to like skip out on the bill, nothing. Most of the time, these people have like an envelope full of cash waiting for me or ready to Venmo me my shit with a fucking $500 tip on top of whatever I fucking charge. You know what I'm saying? So uh, to I bring that up because you brought up that little bit. I did see something about extortion or something from that that artist as well. Like, or did I read that wrong? Um, I think that's, that's what people are saying that she's doing. She's extorting her clients. Right. But I thought there was like a literal legal thing against her or something or that shop or something maybe i i I don't know there was some better business bureau there was some better business bureau complaints where people were like accusing her of fraud and shit and the better business bureau was like investigating but yeah again that's another reason like why i one i do the consults like i do um I don't, I, I never have problems. You know what I mean? I never have problem clients. There'll be times that they're just like, oh, I'm not really feeling this thing or what, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I don't think I've ever had, since I've implemented like a full day, half day thing. And I started doing this like three or four years ago. Um, I just, they know what it is right off the rip. So like once we're done, they give me my 
other half, everybody's happy. I've got return clients. What a, you know what I mean? Like that, um, the whole, like just going after people. I do like the idea of tattooers coming together and maybe forming like some type of group of maybe like flaky clients or, you know, just trouble clients, but to put them on blast, like publicly like that, like, nah, like that's not cool. You know what I mean? Nowadays that shit will get you killed. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) <laughs> not you know um you fuck with people's lives like that man like that can get you hurt real bad you know what i mean yeah well I one wanna... thing i want to fucking touch on is um the fucking uh everybody keeps talking about going on yachts look i'm not opposed to a motherfucker having tattooing getting him on yachts all right right (laughs) one of my plans in life and it's not just from tattooing i want to be able to take my fucking family to dubai and party with fucking sheiks and shit for a fucking month and drive lamborghinis and fucking foreign exotic cars that i didn't that'd be dope right you know what i'm saying like and like i plan on doing that with investments and real estate and all this other stuff right but also tattooing because i plan on having a number of studios and at some point in time i plan on fucking turning a very heavy profit from all these fucking studios that I'm investing my heart and soul and money and time into. So I don't give a fuck if you're on a yacht. Just make sure you use integrity to get the money to fucking get there. And yeah. that's, that's the do big it the right way. Do it. Do right that's by the your but is like, do you tattoo because you want to be on a yacht or do you tattoo because you love tattooing and you hope to be on a yacht? I hope to be on one one day. But I, I mean, wanna... the story tells itself. I've been tattooing since I'm fucking damn near five, 14 years old, you know, unofficially. Exactly you know, it. So like, that like, okay. you know, yeah. And that's exactly it. That like, you happen to have a skill set. You happens to have taken you far enough in life. And you happen to be the sort of dude that connects with people. You're the total package. You fucking provide grace. You provide empathy. You provide a good experience. You happen to be great at tattooing. Like Everything lined up right universally through fucking luck and hard work and skill set that you could be on a yacht because of it, but you weren't a dude that at 18 years old was like, well, I don't want to work, but I want to be a millionaire, so I'm going to order me a fucking dragon hawk off Amazon, take (laughs) – fucking you know Damn, tattoo mastery dragon hawk. take you know tattoo mastery class fucking number seven and then open up a little private studio and charge three thousand a day to do fucking illustrative floral and because and i want to be on a yacht no i feel like- and i do i do illustrative floral all day so like that's not even me shitting on the style but also like if somebody rolled in and wanted a fucking trad badass eagle or they wanted a fucking realism patch tattoo or what like i'll do whatever or i'll point them to somebody like josh or kayla or fucking will that can do it better than me at our shop because like that is a huge thing of the client and experience that i've had clients that have been like hey i want to get tattooed by you you tattooed my friends they said fucking great things about you i'm loving it i want in and i'm like here's what's awesome i would love to have you Here's what sucks. You want a fucking portrait of your daughter. And I am the last person here that should be doing it. Talk to this guy. And they're like, but they spoke so highly of you. And I'm like, and I wouldn't work with these motherfuckers if they weren't just as good. You know, so like you feed each other and stuff, but we're all people that are well-rounded. We're always students. We're trying to do better. We're trying to kick ass. And if it gets me on a yacht, then like fucking A, I'm trying to like jump off a yacht and meet a mermaid. I get it. But like... (laughs) I didn't get into tattooing because I wanted to be on a yacht. Uh, I mean, fuck, to be perfectly honest, when I initially bothered fun about it and I'm like 17 out of high school, I was like lucky if tattooing was going to get me into a fucking Toyota Celica. Um, like it just like, I was you know, it's, say, it's, shit, it's a lot less. Tattooing got me on a trip. And it's, it's lot, a lot less about complaining about that. It's just that the people that present it as that. It's never about, man, you're going to get to meet these awesome people and you're going to get to travel and you're going to get to keep growing as an artist and you're going to get to keep growing in your integrity and learn how to deal with people and have ups and downs and it's going to be awesome. It's just people that are be like, hey, follow my system. You're going to be on that boat player. And it's presented as nothing but like a fucking 2 a.m. infomercial, just like buy a machine we get in hot air balloons, pimp. And I just like, 
I, like the, and that's the part of it that bugs me. I think if you, if someone's being flaky and you want to charge them your hourly to design it because they really might not get it, design fees are cool. If you want to be on a yacht or on a fucking jet set flight to France because you want to live your best life, that is awesome. There's nothing wrong with liking materials. There's nothing wrong with charging people. There's nothing wrong with knowing your worth and sticking with it. If you're fucking cool and you do good, those people will stick by you and they'll know you're doing it for the right reasons. But yeah, when it turns into just like cartoon cash register noises and like get on a fucking boat is when it turns into like, ah. I'm getting Vince Sant from the V shred videos. And like, stop scrolling. Cardio doesn't burn fat. <laughs> but like tattoo. I love that dude. Vibes. I love that dude. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think his name is Vince Sant, and he's the beast. Yeah, I see guy. him all the time. Yeah. But tattoo three three body types guy. Stop <laughs> scrolling. Get on a yacht. Charge more. God, well, the people the that thing. do this one, they like tap the, where's my camera? There we go. They tap the camera with their pencil. They're like, hey, you, hey, you, here's what you're doing wrong. <laughs> Like, damn, you, if you ever really want to get me to sign up for anything that you're supposedly teaching, Telling me I'm fucking up is probably not what's going to get me in the door. Yeah. One thing we don't, uh, well, we have alluded or avoided in this conversation is uh, the client. You know what I mean? Um, I, I think a lot of the times we'll go out of our way. At least I know me and Dusty will go out of our way. I know Aura will do it. Kayla will do it. Um, go out of their way to do all these extra little things for the tap. It just keeps bringing back more and more clients. And I think about that, those infomercials and stuff like that, like, yeah, you could be on a yacht and fucking whatever and blah, blah, blah. And then I think to myself, like, again, I don't even have 2000 followers on Instagram. I'm pretty low key dude. I don't really, I'm not out there like that. Uh, last March, I did a swan dive off a fucking yacht, bro. Uh, I mean, like uh, in less than 30 days uh, in April to May, I was on the West coast and then I was down at Robbie's shop <laughs> on the fucking East coast, man. Like, but I've worked my motherfucking ass off. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I've, really like focused on hey dude if i don't treat these clients well i can't do none of this shit dog i can't do none of it without you (laughs) right if you if you get good service at a restaurant or wherever you like might tell your friends like oh yeah we went to that place it was really cool if you have a bad experience like I'll I'll be calling fucking cousins that I haven't seen in years. Like motherfucking Olive Garden didn't mm. treat me like family. Uh, like all all it takes, and that's the thing. How many people got treated kind of crappy by that girl in Canada versus how many maybe liked their experience or whatever? It just took that one person that she treated like shit, and mm-hmm. she even admitted in her video. She's like, I gave her the money. I liked her work. I know I'm part of the problem. All I wanted was, hey, you already have like two grand for me. I just want the actual tattoo deposit back because I'm not getting tattooed. And this lady fucking talked down to her and did all this stuff that like now she's fucking canceled. And it like that's really all it takes sometimes is like one bad review, no matter how good you do with other people, can sink you if you're doing shitty stuff. If she would have been a fucking saint and that would have been because we all have problematic clients here and there. It just happens um, without naming names or anything. Josh and I Saturday at the shop, another artist that works with us had some clients in that just like, I don't think anything could have made them happy ever in life. No, um, God, no. God. They, they just, they weren't happy with anything. And it was a fight for that artist to change and, you know, adapt and fucking whatever and keep them happy and whatever. Like you're going to get those people. But if you're doing things right, when that person does speak up, 800 other clients are going to come out of nowhere and be like, dude, I was treated like gold. I don't know what you're talking about. And the fact that somebody dogpiled on this girl and instead of anyone defending her, it just turned into a bunch of other people sharing similar experiences. Like, yeah. Like if you bust your ass and you treat people right, they're going to love you. And you're always going to have 
that one client and you're always going to have a day where like you misspell fucking someone's wedding date or something. And like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, you're, you're going to be the problem sometimes. And to be able to be like, I fucked up, I'm gonna fix that shit goes a long way with people versus somehow finding a way to be like, you're the problem. You're the issue. You did this wrong. I'm always right. And, uh, yeah, I just, I think it's that thing. Like the, just, you piss off one person and you're in the wrong, like they'll tell everyone they know. I just, what can you lose by doing right by your people? Like, you don't lose anything by just <laughs> They may turn out right to be thing. that person. Like, one of my favorite clients, Ashley, like, I did a little fucking literal $100 flash sale Pinterest rose on her wrist, and it got us to talking, and it got us to bullshitting about a million other things. I have now done two full sleeves on her. We're working on a full leg sleeve. I've been tattooing her for, like, two, three years now. Uh, we're working on the third sleeve on her leg. She has probably brought in at least a dozen people to me. And some of them just wanted, you know, infinity loops or Braden and Zayden and all that. Some of them have wanted like dope ass back pieces. Like she is the client that just keeps on giving and she's such a cool chick. And like, I've been through stuff like her husband passed away and I was supposed to tattoo her soon after I had tattooed her husband a few times. Like I helped her through that and we chatted about it. Like she's just a friend now because of a hundred dollar Pinterest throws like that little doing right. You never know how that's going to loop back around, but like it probably went like Josh said with that lady just happened to turn out to be a realtor happened to fucking get him hooked up with that stuff. Like it just happened to work that way. Yeah. I have a, I have a little story that I want to tell. Um, so a little after I opened the shop, uh, my rates were 1500 for the full day. <clears throat> And I was really battling with settling into that. I felt so bad. I'm like, I did this giant fucking tattoo on this dude's thigh, right? Fucking drew it up freehand, did the tattoo, executed it wonderfully. I loved it. I thought it was great. But like, it was his dead dog, right? And so when we were done, he didn't let out the emotions like I would have. You know, like... I'd be like, oh my God, I love you. And I'd kiss him and I'd suck her dick and I'd take him to dinner and I'd tell him all these things, right? Well, fucking, I'm over here telling myself what a piece of shit I must be because he didn't really react. And I was like, damn, I must, I must not be worth this money, right? Well, then he sends me an email that makes me cry <laughs> because he let me down in a good way. And he's like, dude, I know I didn't even react. But like, I was so stunned. It was so perfect. It is my boy. I fucking love him. Thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. All these great things. And I'm like, wow, maybe I should stop erring on the side of Robbie sucks and realizing that not everybody is vulnerable like me. Not everybody is open and raw like I am. So like, it took him to have to put that wall of email between us to say the things that he said that I truly believed because why would he write that email unprompted if he didn't really mean it? And I was like, damn, all right, don't be so hard on yourself. And uh, you know, here I am now, uh, a year or two later, like feeling fully confident in my $2,500 day rate because you come in and, and like, Josh, we are different. We are not the same homes. You know, I show up at 1 p.m. Your appointment time <laughs> is 1 p.m. You know what I'm saying? Like. We sit together and go for a couple seconds. And I'm like, yo, I got three ideas I, I want to work with. The one is going to show up. Cool. And they're like, yeah, I like that. I'm like, you know what? I like that too. And I'm like, cool. Give me a minute. And it'll take five minutes to an hour, you know? And sometimes I'll draw with them. Sometimes I won't. But I'll always, if I get to a point where my gut's telling me, go talk to them, ask them a question. I will. And it's funny because the dude that I was, that I was doing a sleeve on last week, um, he told me, he's like, bro, I love that, like, you gave me, like, the freedom to give input. And, like, you didn't just give me something. Like, you you let me fucking help you figure out what this was going to be. Because, like, I felt him. And he's, like, super, like, super all over the place and stuff. So I had to make sure that, like, when I put a piece to the design together, like, he was going to be solid and settled, not all over the place and scared. <laughs> and he appreciated the fuck out of that and told me that later. And I didn't even... Like I said at the beginning, I didn't even realize I do this collaborative fucking thing with my clients. But like when Rock did this fucking um did this fucking Paul Wall on me, 
I expected him to have something drawn up because the last few artists that I had fucked with had, you know, that's okay. They had, they had something drawn up and they didn't want me a part of the process. Rock's like, no, I want to sit down with you. I want to make this right. And I want to make it what you want. And like, he gave me a Paul Wall piece, but he listened to the fact that the rest of my arm is going to be Florida. So like he put this fucking, you know, this flamingo and palm tree in there and like made it Florida vibes and like, pink neon stuff in the lettering and like wow this dude fucking hit all the fucking parts that i didn't even know i wanted but like he sat with me and helped me create the tattoo that jives with the rest of my arm not just a dope piece that's going to stand out and be different than the rest of my arm and show his skills he showed his skills by showing me love compassion grace and like helping me figure out the design that i didn't even know i wanted which was super beautiful and brilliant and that helped me develop a different uh, consultation style and different um, production style. And honestly, I can't create art before the, the session. I don't do it, it doesn't work for me. Like if I take your ideas and you're not next to me, I go nuts and I waste about three <laughs> hours fucking going nuts and then an hour fucking doing a design I hate just to fucking make something different day up. So like I found what works for me and works for the client, but instead of showing up early and giving them that time, I'm like, look dude, if you want to be here till midnight, you paid my day rate. You got me till midnight if the piece requires it. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For sure. if you want to quit at six, you still pay me the day rate. But if you want to fucking quit at eight, that's when we shut. That's when the, the shop closes. So like, I feel like finding what works for you is the best. Um, because oh, when, yeah. I, when I try to work like you, Josh, it drives me nuts. But like, my clients are happiest when I work like me. Yeah, yeah, uh, that and that's funny because I tried to do that um, a few <laughs> times within. No, nah, for real, I did in yeah. the last, uh, you know, probably two years, because there's other artists I know that do it, um, and I I love the idea, I really do. Um, what I, I love your idea, huh? I just I love your idea as well. You know, pre planning and creating something that you can present to them. But I'm like, hey. We putting on a wingsuit and jumping off this mountain together, homie. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm still. I think, and uh, you know, uh, someone asked me not too long ago if like I still get nervous, and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Every goddamn tattoo I do, bro. Um, so I think what it was for me is I'm. It is me learning me, you know, like learning yeah. that I. Um, learning that I get super frustrated uh, if I can't articulate the way, you know, I really need to like get this out. And if I'm sitting right there and then like me and you aren't vibing and that's 20 minutes of us going back and forth. And then I go in the break room, I pull my fucking hair out. Like I don't want to take myself out of the game before I even get a play, you know? And again, that's just me. So then, like, I tried to do it, like, kind of how you do set it up. And then that's when they're getting, to, well, can we do this? Can we move this over here? Can we do this? Can we do this? So for me, it's like, okay, I'm going to probably show you at least two designs, you know, uh, when it comes in. And we can choose from either one of them. And then I'll make the minor changes, like, right there in front of them. So I can still kind of give them that feeling that they have like some input and that their input does matter because it does matter. But at the end of the day, and this is just being realistic. The fuck did you come to me for? You know, you come to me because you like my shit, you know? So like, let's always keep, keep that foot on that side. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's, uh, I get so fucking frustrated because if it's in the moment and they're like, well, I want this, I don't think you're really getting it. And I don't, and it's like, I don't know if I'm not getting it. I don't know if you're not explaining it well enough. So I will do their appointment the night before. So I've got all their notes and everything and, and all our conversations in one spot. And then the night before is like when I do their design and everything that way, when I wake up in the morning and I do get in there first thing in the morning, that's literally the last thing I went to sleep doing was like your design. So I, so I'm ready to talk to you immediately. As soon as you walk in the door, I'm excited to show you what I got, you know? Um, so yeah, 
I love the way that you can do shit. I, I fucking love that you can just pull out some goddamn Sharpies and go to fucking town. But I'm envious as fuck of that. Uh, there's one little thing, and I use this as a crutch, and I will admit that, that I'm left-handed. I do smear the living fuck out of everything that I fucking draw on the skin. So it's very yeah. frustrating that I'll watch these videos of these guys and they just put this clean ass Sharpie line on a motherfucker. It's like, bitch. Nah. Have you ever? Uh, <laughs> I was just going to wonder you? if anybody here has ever been so frustrated with uh, communicating with your client and not being able to get on the same page with them that you call the police and dox them to every other tattoo shop <laughs> in the fucking no. city. No. Like, how no. do you get that entitled? I want to make sure that I never become that entitled and that gross towards my clientele, no matter how frustrated I might be with yeah, them sure. or with how the process is going now i've had to break up with clients before oh yeah, yeah. did you dox <laughs> them <laughs> no i didn't you did know did you call now, the police on them no no I, I didn't I call did the too. police i didn't i didn't <laughs> put their social on the on the internet nothing like that you know what i'm saying like, because uh, that's fucking unhinged Just yeah that's, that's that's wild man that's bordering on narcissistic personality disorder yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's bordering. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right over <Generous>. that bitch. <laughs> and what's funny about all of this and like what Josh just said that I love is like I've been at Robbie's shop and watched him have a client where he just like, all right, what are we doing? He do he like literally doesn't know. He's like, okay, I know I, I know who you are and I know you've got an arm. What are we doing? I have watched Josh. <laughs> design for fucking 12 hours straight for somebody for a full sleeve and then brings them in he's there at 10 a.m he's already set up he brought him coffee he's like ready to go and show him the design i usually if i book a half day and i tell you to be there at noon i hope to be tattooing by one but i know there's probably going to be 20 30 minutes of tweaking i happen to be in portland when medusa had a client that was being kind of nitpicky and sent her like a 50 page document about this lace tattoo that she wanted. And I happened to watch her console. Everybody's thing is completely different. And every single one of them I've seen work. And that's the cool thing is that like, whatever works for you, you'll find your people. I mean, how many times in our old shop did we watch Joey Brenner literally just fucking print off a picture of an Eagle and just draw it on with a Sharpie and tattoo a realism Eagle. And halfway through, like, he's looking at the paper because he like didn't even realize there's a fucking watermark on it and he just kind of like and goes over here and it just fucking somehow works for him i watched him draw a semi truck from memory one time and it's still the most mind-blowing thing in art i've ever seen because who the fuck remembers what a semi truck really looks like um <laughs> you know it, it, everybody <laughs> thinks if if that's what works for you but you give a shit and you practice your craft like that's what works for you and it's Everybody here are the sort of people I think that if it didn't work for your client, instead of being a dick or fucking posting their ID online, you'd be like, hey, this guy over here at this booth is going to do what you want a lot better than you or, or a lot better than me. And like, let me get you guys hooked up because <laughs> I want you to get that experience that you want. I'm just maybe not the dude for it. And like, but everybody's way works. And that's so cool that we all can do things completely differently and nobody's wrong. Because none of us called the cops or posted anybody's IDs online. Well, and, that's, and that's the thing about coaching individually. Like you can coach in a group setting, but still offer individual information. You know, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. One of the things I'm taking from this is like, hey, I don't, I don't know what everyone's skill level is, but if you ain't where you want to be, and if you know it, like let's not pretend that you're where you think you are. For that. Can I change my motto from uh, at least I didn't kill Selena to at least I don't dox my clients? It, it yeah. doesn't have the same fucking ring to it. I'm, I'm way more into yeah. I didn't kill Selena. Okay. So you're going to have to change my tattoo now. Yeah, like, 
You, you, go fuck yourself, Medusa. What kind of entitled piece of shit are you? Now you're changing pussies <laughs> like this? What are you charging seventy two hundred dollars for it? She's gonna she's gonna hit me with a six thousand dollar change fee. <laughs> so like, well, it's you didn't even know that that was an option. Like it's your fault. No, nah, I guess oh, I'm yeah, going to fault. You're I'm a so, victim. Yeah, you're right. I'm a loser. I'm going to TikTok with this. <laughs> yeah, you're going to jail because she's calling the cops on you. Right. Yeah. All right. Oh man, I'm <gasps> sorry. <laughs> Bless you. How, how much of a people pleaser is that lady? And I know because I am also a people pleaser, so I'm not shitting on her. But how much is of a people pleaser is that lady that she got scammed out of like three grand? went online, kept saying she was the one at fault and refused to give a name or a shop because she didn't want to bring any harm to the lady. It was like, I don't want to name names. And I know that's, I'm probably the problem. That's but not a people pleaser. That's just being brain. decent. She's being decent. She's being kind. She's just sharing her experience, hoping to help other people avoid that while also not trying to... Thank you. She also did say, I'm hoping to get my money back or some of my money back. Yeah. So I don't shit on this person. So part of it was her being a good person and part of her, part of it was her being self-serving. At the end of the day, Matt Watts flying around to fucking LA to get the tattoo for free. Yeah. So she's she, she going to be all right. She's going to be fine. Yeah. Plus, Abbott's yeah. fucking refunding all her fucking money. She all right. But I don't like, blame her. Yeah. Due to the fact I that do it. <laughs> she was a good person through it that's why people are helping her out yes yeah, it perfect. has been noted by a lot of people and it that she mm-hmm. made a point to still try to protect the identity of the artist despite being scammed and yeah um, that's everybody loves it i don't i don't know how many of you guys have a reddit account but one of my favorite reddits is am i the asshole and people just that. post <laughs> And the am i the asshole reddit and fu- it's funny because sometimes it'll be somebody like that and it's like hey i paid like three grand i didn't even get tattooed uh she gave me a sketch but i thought it looked like a kid's sketch i don't want to name her name but blah 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 am i the asshole and a thousand people in the comments are like no that's fucking crazy and then there'll be like the next post down is like you know fucking I went on Craigslist and this person was giving away a free bed, but I asked them for blankets too because I need blankets and they told me to fuck off. Am I the asshole? And people are like, yeah, you fucking being a choosing beggar with a free ass bed. Like, fuck you. And so like, it's so funny <laughs> that this lady's like in the, am I, am I the asshole thing? And people are like, no. And like you said, that's why they hooked her up. Because for how many of that, how many people do we know that go online and are like, this fucking shop, they think $200 for a full sleeve that's fucking stupid. My cousin do it for fifty dollar in his basement, and it's just like, no, you're the asshole. Like, <laughs> no, like, you're the fuck. Asshole. I don't know what to tell you. There's literally someone posting in all the local groups in Melbourne, Florida, right now. Twenty dollar half sleeve, two hundred dollar full sleeve. Get it where you fit in. Holla holla! I come to you. I'm so upset at that, and I almost fucking posted like in response to it, and then I re- realized that like. Jay Z said it. Don't argue with fools. People from a distance can't tell who is who. So Robbie just say, "Okay, Jay Z, you right. Okay, Jay Z, you right." Like, see, see ya in here when we fix it. For sure. Right, exactly. I, uh, Our clients. <laughs> there's a uh, interesting comment. Like uh, somebody shared one of my. Uh, things today and there's an inter- there's an interesting comment that said it's sad that artists um, have to like put out disclaimers now and I haven't really responded to that yet um, but uh, Wait, I think comment? it's I think Sorry, it's I for that too. do what what was the comment we were, we were about oh, to get oh. up to uh, so I posted uh, something that was just like, you know, hey, consultations are always free, blah, 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 blah. And then who, whoever shared it in one of their comments, it was like, you know, it's sad that good, reputable artists have to put out like disclaimers and stuff like that. 
And I'm kind of like torn because I feel it, you know, I feel like I do a decent job of treating people well and stuff like that. So I don't feel that I need to explain myself. Um, But what I learned a long time ago is the general public is just generally misinformed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. You know, so so it's like, you know, uh, I, I feel like an obligation to, you know, inform people that, hey, you know, they may do it this way. And that's perfectly fine. Um, Robbie does this this way. Dusty does it this way. Um, and then, you know, giving people the other side of the drama and like the good side that can come of all this is information. You know, where I've had a lot of people over the years like, oh, man, I had no idea. Oh, or I don't know how this works. Or And it's like, well, fuck, dude, you're about to give me $6,000. Let me explain it to you. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel like, uh, yeah, a little torn on that because it's like, yeah, what do you, you know, I don't feel that I need to explain it. But at the same time, the general public is just generally misinformed. So. No, I, and I feel like it, I think somebody just said it. The general public is typically misinformed. So yeah. like, I don't think I don't think you're an idiot or an asshole or a loser for having to fucking tell people this is how I do things. You know, right? I, yeah. I don't, and I don't. I don't feel like you're also. <laughs> I don't feel like you're also giving the um the unnecessary "I'm sorry" moment. You know. Yeah. Because nobody wants to be that person that's constantly saying I'm sorry for reasons that suck. Right. Yeah, so I mean, I, did, I didn't like comment on that or anything. So I was actually kind of just sorting it out in my head. Yeah, it's kind of like, is it annoying? Sure, it's annoying. But it's like it took, it, it'll take me three minutes out of my day to type right. something up and inform somebody. and then that's it. Then it's like, whoever sees that, whatever following I have, they can see that. And, you know, uh, that's one of the one things I learned a long time ago about, you know, the whole treating clients a certain way. If I'm out like wrecking on clients or talking shit and I've had it done multiple times to me, cause it's probably karma, uh, you know, <laughs> but it's right. like their first tattoo like man i've been thinking about this lead for like five or six years and you know blah 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 i didn't realize and this is way before i went to this other shop and uh, and i mean robbie and dusty know who i'm talking about and shit but um before i went there i was like thought about it and it's like man regardless of my political view my religious view or any type of shit like if I put anything out there that's a negative, like I'm going to keep getting hit with shitty clients and fucking punk ass people that want to talk shit on the internet all the time. And so I like had to realize that maybe that person that has been thinking about that sleeve is going to be like, yo, I do not know want nothing to do with that dude. Like he'd be wrecking on his clients. He'd be talking shit, you know, so, um, and those people that I have are the generally misinformed. And then I inform them of the whole process. I'll even tell them like, hey, I'm probably more expensive than a lot of people around here. But like, I'm again, just fully transparent with that. And I try to walk them through the whole thing. This uh, dude didn't even book with me like two Wednesdays ago, spent an hour and 15 minutes with the guy. First tattoo, didn't know what to expect. I told him everything that I do, everything that I offer, stuff like that, you know? Uh, And then I think it was like a week or so later, he hit me back up. We got another like consultation coming up, you know? And it's like, I could have just been like, fuck off, guy. Do you want the tattoo or not? Like, I ain't got time to fuck with you right now. You know, I took an hour and 15 minutes out of my fucking day. But I'm going to speak it into existence. You know, it's like, uh, hey, like, I'm probably going to book a full sleeve with this guy. If I wouldn't have spent that fucking hour talking to him for free, you know, like, 
I do uh, on my website though. Here's another thing, like where I've just learned like a business aspect of things is I do free consultations and I will book you just like anybody else. I'll send you a reminder, email, everything. Now, if you flake on that and you waste my time, I do have a two hundred dollar consultation fee. Um, now, if you decide to book, that will go towards any price of the tattoo. Um, if you decide not to book, I'm taking that two hundred dollars because now you just wasted my fucking time, bro. Right. I you don't know. feel like that's reasonable. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, I think so. And that's the same thing I was saying about like the whole drawing fee that I have had people that seemed real wishy-washy that I'm like, yeah, you're going to pay my hourly to design it. But if you book, I will absolutely put that three, four hundred dollars towards your tattoo because you fucking booked it and that's how it would normally go. But if I draw for four hours and show it to you and you're like, oh, that's tight. Uh, I just really don't want to get tattooed. Then like, fuck yeah, I'm getting paid for my time, but it's going (laughs) to not be 1500 it's not fifteen hundred dollars for a twenty minute sketch though for sure. I right, right. wanted to add a footnote about the the appointment that I ended up rescheduling. you know, I lost a day of tattooing. I'm not getting paid for that time or anything. I do want to add that I take that day where we you know sized everything up and realized we had some revisions to do and it was going to take a little bit longer in drawing time. I'd like to consider that a follow-up consultation. And I'm really, really, really happy that it went that way. I'm not mad about losing a day of work because now I know that our next session, like I'm more on the same page with her. I know exactly, we have the same vision now. It's gonna be even better. I'm more prepared and I'm even more excited about this project now that I know exactly what we're doing. Like, and I didn't, I lost a day of tattooing, sure, but this is going to be a dope ass fucking sleeve, and we're going to have a blast. And as a portfolio piece, you're going to be proud of it, and that client's going to continue to refer people and come back. Mm-hmm. So that's important. Yeah, um, and she's so sweet too. Not even mad. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap us up here because we are 36 minutes over time. Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Weird. But uh. I really appreciate everybody's input today. Um, uh, it's nice. It's nice to have a conversation flowing, um, and it's good to hear everybody. You know, Dusty summed it up the best. I've seen almost everybody here work, and they all work the way they work. It works. So, like, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing if it feels right. If it doesn't, you're probably fucking shit up uh, in one way or another. <laughs> Um, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I I made a I made a distinction to myself a long time ago. I made a promise I wasn't going to do it if it felt gross. So I stopped doing things that feel gross. So if your if your business practices feel gross, fucking evaluate. Put the mirror on yourself and see what you're doing wrong. Um, and you know, a lot of the time it's minor. You know, the major changes are usually minor shifts. Uh, and it's usually your ego that takes the biggest hit. You know, somebody said, what do you have to lose uh, by, by, you know, being truthful with your client? A fucking hits your ego, honestly. You know, like, and you know what? Your ego is just kind of a dick sometimes and is overly protective. So, um, you know, allow your ego to protect you, but also allow your fucking brain to put you in check uh, and be the best version of yourself. Because... If you can't sleep good at night, there might be a reason for it. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, sure. thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, uh, this is a really important topic in the tattoo community right now. Um, uh, it's a big topic and I want it to have mm-hmm. more substance and value uh, than just making a video uh, jumping on the train because that's like I wanted to do the fucking original Fox sketch on somebody as a funny little, you know, let's get some views hit. But like, it didn't mean enough to me to make it happen yet. And I saw somebody else did it. So I'm like, ah. Um, oh, the, but- the flip shades one is so good too. Where you <laughs> right. like so the good. price tag sticker on it. Yeah. And I feel, I, feel <laughs> much better, I feel much better about sitting here and uh, talking about the feelings behind it um, than, you know, 
having a fun little dig at the people by creating the tattoo, which would have been fun. It would have been a spike in my social media, but you know, um, it didn't really feel that aligned with me. This, like Dusty called me, he's like, are we doing it today? Uh, can we talk about tattoo gate? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Um, and I wanted Thor to weigh in, but, um, we got real on his hand when we were talking, so he had to fall. <laughs> <away. laughs> and, and it was something that I brought up to Robbie when I called him earlier that, like, we all know people that, like, Josh shared a GoFundMe recently for, like, a client that he's tattooed and he knows really well. And, you know, their sister is doing this GoFundMe because they were in this bad motorcycle wreck and all of this stuff. And it's like, you always get people that care, that want to donate money and they want to be a part of it and they want to help. And then you always get like some weird, it's like when someone passes away and there was that person that like met him at one party one time, but they're making all these posts kind of like trying to make it about them. And like, you know, the whole thing, we talked about it with Matt that I was like, oh, Matt's a cool dude. You know, is there going to be a little bit of internet celebrity to be gained from like doing this? Yes. Are they also paying to fly this woman out and do all this shit? And she seems like a good woman. So like they're rectifying the situation. Absolutely. But for every one of him that did that, how many other dudes, you know, um, this is something I, I'll, I'll keep it short because I know we're rapping. I didn't really post anything online about it. Um, like two weeks ago, I covered up a small swastika on a guy that was like 20 years old. He got it in prison. He didn't want it. It was this whole thing. And I covered it and I didn't charge him. He ended up tipping me anyways. But I was like, dude, I don't even want it. I'm just happy to help. And I didn't post it online because I was like, I don't want to seem like that guy that's just posting yeah. this shit so that people will be like, oh, he did the thing. Like, and I feel like yeah. there's a lot of like people will try to capitalize on anything. And there's going to be some sketchy people out there that just want a coattail that are going to offer to bring this girl down that would have done like an even worse tattoo on her or it just would have been like an <laughs> ugly situation. And it's cool that somebody who is good at tattooing is doing it the right way. But yeah, it's 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 cool that we talked about this in a positive way instead of just jumping on the bandwagon of like, well, let's all do shitty fox tattoos and fuck this person and yeah. Yep. Yep, absolutely. No, man, I do a lot of fucking good deeds that I don't fucking find necessary to share because I feel like a dirt <coughs> fucking, fucking like, look at me, look at me, I did a good deed. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm so I'm I'm struggling with that right now because I do uh that girl that Dusty's talking about. Um you know, I saw the GoFundMe, like she has mad support. It's great. Like everybody, I saw like some of my people have donated to it, which is awesome. I don't know if anybody watches this little podcast. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, but one of the things I'm going to do when she, she's got months and months and months of recovery, like left, you know, in this accident. But once she's ready, like I'm going to fly down there. I'm going to find a shop, you know, that'll let me guest spot down there um and like i'm gonna fly down there and just like tattoo her and her aunt and everything and i don't want shit for it i don't want to put it on the internet i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna show up there one day when i know i'll talk to her aunt and shit make sure i know that she's like healthy and able to do it and i'll just fly my fucking ass down there man and tattoo the shit out of her because she's a sweetheart i've tattooed her since she was 17 years old man watch this girl like dude she's 22 23 been like own business since she was 17 years old dog goes out of her way to help everybody so it's like man i couldn't donate thousands of dollars like i wanted to we're trying to get a house and all this other stuff but what i can do is fucking go down there <laughs> tattoo the shit out of them show them some love i don't need that to hit social media but i will say i have a tiny hidden agenda she's gonna talk about it and that's hmm. what you know what I'm saying. Is that's that, what I'm up. Is that a know? hidden agenda? Is that a hidden agenda? Or are you just knowing the positive effects of your fucking action? Well, that that could be too. Yeah. That could be you too. Can yeah. gain. I think I think and you're just feeling that's guilty a sign because you know that's maybe that's a sign yeah, that you're, maybe I do. Yeah. It's okay yeah, that's to a sign that you're a good reward. person <laughs> that you it, know something cool might come of your actions that you're doing to do them, and you're still like something might cool come might from it though. So like Am I the asshole? You know, that's that's the sign that you're doing <laughs> yeah. something right. It's yeah. okay I'm it on to Reddit. reap a reward for doing something good. Right. Well, and I you appreciate know, I, I appreciate the validation. Thank you. 
<laughs> no, me, me, me and my best friend talked about this one time when I when I started the rad movement. I was like, dude, am I a bad person? Because like I really enjoy the way it makes me feel like doing good in the to world. Nice. Like people. <laughs> right, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like I get a high off it. I get a rush off it. I feel rad about it. Like, am I a scumbag for that? And he's like, honestly, dude, I feel the fucking same way. This dude's a doctor now. Um, and like, part, that's part of his motivation of being a doctor because it feels good helping motherfuckers. Am I so, selfish yeah. for doing the right thing? Because right, it makes me right. feel good. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So, so hold on to that, Josh. And remember that, you know, as long as you're not doing that as your major motivation, if that sparks a little bit inside you, that's like, wow, I might actually get something out of this. Cool. Like, that dude like you found a hundred bucks on the ground it doesn't mean you're a piece of shit for spending it or feeling yeah, good yeah. about it you know <laughs> well I, I will admit like you know because i like i kept like really good tabs on like the donation thing because if any of my clients like donated i told them to privately send me screenshots and i'm gonna take that off like their next like tattoo session or, or whatever you know but i didn't want to blast that all like publicly and shit you know what i mean um but the uh yeah it's weird that we feel guilty for it is. It like is. wanting to so yeah i was thinking it's crazy that that got brought up too because i was going to pick up raven at school and I'm, i'll wrap this one up is i think we all do a little bit of clout chasing Everybody. as long as it's for a fucking good cause man i'm all for it dude yeah you know what i mean so yep that's what i'll like end it. on <laughs> the messages I get on a regular basis about how much I help people, they're great. Cause you know what? I have fucking a lot of bad moments in life. And when somebody says, Hey, you've helped me a lot by being a good person. Keep doing what you're doing. The world needs people like you, man. Sometimes that's the difference between me hating myself and me, like just barely not hating myself. <laughs> Yeah, and it's sure. and it's yeah. tough sure. because you get those i'm pretty sure all of us here probably get those regularly and you're like damn that made me feel good i really want to share that with the world because i'm yeah. riding a high from that and then you immediately want to step back and be like oh i know a lot of shitty people that fabricate that stuff am i gonna look like a shitty person right. if I yeah. Share? yeah so then you just yeah. like keep it to yourself I almost, <laughs> you let it hide out in the inbox and you don't talk about it because you don't want to look like a dickhead I almost jumped in and offered that lady a free fox tattoo. But I was like, you know what, man? There's probably a bunch of people already offering it. I don't want to look like a vulture. I don't have a proper presentation lined up of how I'm going to fucking do it. Like Matt did the perfect presentation on fucking Mother's Day, congratulating her on fucking being a mom. Like, dude, yeah, yeah. Look, I don't, it, it, like it was edited. It might have been scripted, but I don't give a fuck. It felt like it came from the heart. Um, and yeah, I feel, for sure. I feel like he did it right. Um, and so hats off to you, Matt Vaught. I love what you're doing with it. Um, you know, like, and the, and also I was like, I don't want to fucking add my two cents when I don't really know what kind of two cents I have to add. So let me let somebody else take this. And that's what it was. Somebody else took the win on that because one person was going to win by tattooing her this tattoo on her for free because a lot of us tattooers had a good fucking heart and wanted to be like oh i want to see the good out of this but yeah um i'm done let's wrap this up i love you guys uh thank you to reinventing the tattoo thank you guy gabe and everyone else that fucking make reinventing the tattoo possible um and giving us a space to where tattooers can come together and do something we don't talk do often which is talk about feelings so thank you all very much uh, medusa and Amber, our honorary members of the hosting group. Love you guys. You're the shit. Josh, love the shit out of you, man. Thank you for all your insight today. Dusty, love you long time, baby. Always. Uh, <laughs> love, love, love. <laughs> uh, talk to you guys soon. Take care. Love you guys. Love you. Bye.